Welcome to Inside the Mavs, presented by Aura. My name is Kevin Gray, Mavericks pre- and post-game host on the Dallas Mavericks Radio Network. Appreciate you joining me here for the latest episode of Inside the Mavs, the official Mavericks podcast of 97.1 The Freak. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, make sure you like and comment on the video and subscribe to Kevin Gray Sports on YouTube. And if you're listening to the podcast, give it a five-star rating and write a review for it while you're there. And you can find it wherever you get your podcasts on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. What a day it was on Sunday for the Dallas Mavericks after they took out the Houston Rockets 147 to 136. You, ha- you heard the epic calls of both Mark Followell of Mavericks Television and, of course, Chuck Cooperstein of the Dallas Mavericks Radio Network, the radio play-by-play voice of your Dallas Mavericks as the Mavericks find themselves 14-2 and in their last 16 games, a season high, 18 games above 500 as they get ready for a quick two-game road trip as they get ready to take on the Charlotte Hornets on Tuesday and then go to Miami to take on the Miami Heat in a road back-to-back. The Mavericks getting a little bit of news when it comes to the injury report. Obviously, for Derek Lively II, he'll continue to remain out with his knee sprain, but Josh Green has been upgraded to doubtful, which is an upgrade from his injury status over the last couple of weeks where, of course, he's been dealing with an ankle sprain. Jason Kidd saying prior to the game on Sunday against the Rockets that there's a possibility that Josh Green could play on the road trip. We will see if that is, in fact, the case as Josh Green makes his way back to this Mavericks team, a team that could use his services along with Derek Lively the second. But more importantly for the Mavericks to continue building momentum where their magic number is now two to clinch a top six spot in the Western Conference. And that is the most important part of where the Mavericks are as they stand with four games to play in the regular season after playing their first 78 games, a team that's 25 and 15 at the America Airlines Center. But where we focus our conversation today when it comes to the Mavericks is not just the fact that they have been playing extremely well, not just the fact that they have the best record in the NBA in the last 16 games. It's not the fact that this team, since February the 5th, has been absolutely sensational with 22 wins, going 22-7 and in their last 29 games. It's not the fact that the Dallas Mavericks are 22-7 and in the last 29 games that Kyrie Irving has played. He's played 29 straight games. It's not the fact that the Mavericks are playing – their best basketball right now when they need to most. It is the simple fact that this team has been devastating in the clutch this year. We'll get to some of those numbers in just a moment, but that is the focus of where this team is because the poise and the composure that they continue to show, the big shot making that they continue to do, whether it's Dante Exum knocking down a go-ahead three against the Sacramento Kings to be able to beat them for the second time in Sacramento, whether it's P.J. Washington hitting a game winner with four seconds left to beat the Golden State Warriors, whether it's Dante Exum again knocking down a three-pointer to force overtime against the Rockets to be able to put them in position to dominate in overtime and win and sweep their three-game homestand that they had. All of these moments that we have continued to see build up Throughout the course of the year, you can pick any moment that you want to that the Mavericks have been clutch in. This is a team that is showing the poise and the composure of, yes, a championship contender when you look at the Western Conference and the way that the Mavericks have continued to play. You can look at any potential power rankings that you want to, NBA.com, ESPN, whatever power rankings you want to look at. The Mavericks continue to see themselves rise up those rankings because All they've been doing as of late is winning games. And for them to continue to put themselves in this spot this late into this season to gel the way that they've had with the acquisitions of P.J. Washington and Daniel Gafford is remarkable because you and I know it is extremely difficult to be able to get a team to buy in, to be able to build chemistry, and to do that on the fly during the second half of the year. And that's exactly what the Mavericks have been able to do throughout the course of the second half of the year. When you start looking at some of the numbers for this team and what they've been able to do, we talked about how good they've been in the clutch this season, a team 
as 23 and nine this year in clutch games, tied with the Lakers for the best record in the NBA in the clutch. They're number one in offensive rating with a rating of 127.1. They're number nine in defensive rating in the clutch at 106.7, which gives them an overall net rating of plus 20.5, which is good for third in the league. When you have the ability to be able to execute down the stretch, be able to make the correct basketball plays, Tim Hardaway Jr., the way that he was able to with the pass of P.J. Washington to beat the Golden State Warriors with that layup, whether it's Luka Doncic not panicking in the moment and finding a wide-open Dante Exum, and for Exum to continue to have the confidence to knock down those three-pointers and take those shots when the Mavericks need him to. These are the makings of a team that is scary and is going to be dangerous in the playoffs because they are learning how to win in a variety of ways, but doing so in the biggest moments of games which you obviously need when you get to the postseason. And that should be a massive confidence builder if you're a Mavericks fan who has watched this team throughout the course of the year win in a lot of different ways, now winning down the stretch in the biggest moments of basketball games and showing the execution to be able to do it consistently night in and night out. More on this on the other side of this break. Let's hear from today's sponsor of our video and our podcast, and let's hear from Aura. Today's video is brought to you by Aura. Do a Google search on your name and email address to see how much information comes up about you. I was devastated by the amount of information that I could be seeing searching my name and profile, and I knew then I needed to be protected for not just myself, but also for my family. Data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, health records, your relatives, it's all out there. That's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, and other sensitive information. Aura also does so much more to protect me and my family from online threats that I can't see. It's really easy to set up. So I don't have to download several different apps to get things like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more. I get everything at one affordable price. You may already have one of these tools already, but not having Aura is like locking the front door and leaving the back door wide open. Aura is always on, doing the hard work to protect me and my family so I can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. I value my privacy and I value yours. You can go to Aura.com slash Kevin Gray to start your two-week free trial. Please see the link in the description. Back here on Inside the Mavs. Again, thank you for hanging out with us through that video break and podcast break. And thank you to today's sponsor of our video and our podcast in Aura. We were detailing, of course, how well the Mavericks have been playing in the clutch this year, going through some of the numbers to give you a better idea on how good this team has been in the biggest moments of games this year. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, 23-9 and nine in the clutch this season, tied with the Lakers for the best record in the league. You saw their biggest comeback win of the season, overcoming what was a 22-point deficit against the Houston Rockets, a litany of turnovers, but they were able to get themselves back into that game, and more importantly, their superstars, taking over down the stretch. And that's another aspect of today's conversation that ties into how well this team has been doing in the clutch and showing championship-like DNA with the medal they've been showing at the ends of ball games because they are being led not only by MVP candidate Luka Doncic, but also Kyrie Irving, who's having a fantastic season, inching closer to that 50-40-90 season that he is coveting as he was named Western Conference Player of the Week for the Mavericks, ironically for the second time this season, a current and former Maverick were named Eastern and Western Conference Player of the Week with Christos Porzingis being named the Eastern Conference Player of the Week for the Boston Celtics, which is a nice tie-in because we were talking about a little bit earlier how well the Mavericks have been playing over their last 29 games, 22-7. and seven. The only team with a better record in that span over the last 29 games the Boston Celtics themselves, and we know that Boston has the best record in the entire league. So it's kind of ironic that Kyrie Irving and Christos Porzingis would win the Western and Eastern Conference Players of the Week. Luka Dodgers and Jalen Brunson 
won it not too long ago. Again, current and former Maverick winning the Player of the Week awards in the NBA. So a nice little note there. But at the same time, some more numbers to give you more context on what the Mavericks have been doing over the last 29 games. Since February 5th, this team, number four in the NBA in offensive rating, but most importantly, number seven in the league in defensive rating with that 22-7 and seven record, as I mentioned. The only team with a better record is the Boston Celtics during that span. And Kyrie Irving, who you saw in the fourth quarter in that game against the Houston Rockets, scoring 19 of what was his 48 points, his season-high 48 points for the Mavericks in that game against Houston. And he has done everything and then some, not only to be the guy that can score and facilitate and be another option for this Mavericks team offensively, but the leadership and the qualities that he has shown in that department have been evident throughout the season and have gotten better as the season has gone on. You think about after P.J. Washington hit the shot against the Golden State Warriors, who was the one letting the team know, look, we got to get one more stop, one more stop. Who was that? It was Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving at the end of the game, after the Mavericks were able to complete their comeback against the Houston Rockets, who is the one gathering the team in the middle of the floor, having them celebrate together and be able to take in that moment after beating the Houston Rockets, after all they had went through in that game to win in dramatic fashion. It was Kyrie Irving pulling that team together in the middle of the floor. His leadership has been critical for this team throughout the course of this year because we have been looking for someone, if you're a Mavericks fan, looking for someone to be that leader guy in the room. And Kyrie Irving at this stage in his career has decided to take that on, and he's done so beautifully as he's continued to grow with this team and the chemistry with Luka Doncic on and off the floor. Got ex anonymous executives saying via Hoops Hype that the duo of Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving is the best in the NBA, and there's, a, there's no one in this league that you would want to see that the Mavericks who could take them out maybe in a seven-game series. That is how good Luka and Kyrie have been together this season, a duo – that can do everything offensively and, more importantly, showing the effort on the defensive end. Luka Doncic with a blocked shot in that game, continuing to show the effort on the defensive end. All of these things are adding up to a team that looks like is moving toward a playoff run. And it's been difficult to get to this point, obviously, with the amount of adversity that they've gone through. At one point, losing five of six games where the bottom looked like it was dropping out of it and they were free falling, but they were able to get it together. Again, the leadership of Kyrie Irving and Markeith Morris pulling this team aside, having a team meeting and be able to discuss what needed to happen moving forward for this team to reach their potential. And they are reaching that right now, playing their best basketball of the season. And once this team gets fully healthy, once again, because that's been another story of this team, throughout the course of the year, playing more starting lineups than any other team in the league. Right now, dealing with significant injury, obviously, with Derek Lively the second. Once this team gets fully healthy again with the returns of Lively and Josh Green, the depth will be able to come back into play for where they will be able to have Daniel Gafford, who has been battling through foul trouble, been getting into early foul trouble in games recently. His return in Derek Lively will allow these duo, this duo in terms of Lively and Gafford to play that 42 to 43 minute mark in tandem where each one of them is on the floor for the majority of the game. And at one point you were watching them put together over 20 points, over 10 rebounds, over three blocks per game between the two of them and the production that they were producing allowed them to really be a duo third scorer and production uh, teammate for Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. So for them, that's going to be huge for the Mavericks when they get Derek Live with the second back. But obviously, we will wait until he is able to return and be at full strength for this team. But as you continue to watch the Mavericks play throughout the course of the year and be able to show medal in championship, or excuse me, in those moments, hopefully it can lead to a championship mentality that is growing for this team. And for a Mavericks team that it appears is on the road to meeting the Los Angeles Clippers yet again in the NBA playoffs. Still a lot to be determined over the final four games of this season. But if things stand the way that they are as we're talking right now, the Mavericks are going to see the Clippers yet again 
in a playoff series. And I was telling someone about this the other day. Maybe what Luka Doncic and the Clippers are to each other is what Michael Jordan and the Pistons were to one another way back in the day. Because Michael Jordan, in order to finally break through and get to an NBA championship, he had to go through Isaiah Thomas and the Detroit Pistons and the Bad Boys to finally get to the promised land and win that championship. Luka Doncic looks like the Clippers are going to be his version of the Detroit Pistons where Luka eventually just has to get through the Los Angeles Clippers in order to hopefully get to the promised land because you remember in the Western Conference final run a couple of years ago, they went through Utah. Then, of course, that epic seven-game series against the Phoenix Suns before ultimately losing to the Golden State Warriors in the Western Conference final. So they didn't even play the Clippers in that playoff run. So for the Mavericks, it's all about focusing, though, on the task at hand over the final four games of the season, handling their business on the road against Charlotte and then Miami, and then obviously your last couple of games that you have one at home and then before you finish up on the road against Oklahoma City, who's still got a lot to play for themselves as Minnesota, Denver, and OKC continue to jockey for the number one seed in the Western Conference. But if you're a Mavericks fan watching this team over the last now two months, because when you look at this team, That, to me, is what strikes me now as I've looked at what they've done now for the last two-plus months, which is the amount of time and the amount of games to build the sample size that gives you and I much more confidence that what we've seen isn't necessarily a mirage, but it is real because they've been doing it for quite some time now. It's one thing to put it together for a five- or six-game stretch. It's another to put it together for 10, 15, 20 25, 30 games, which is where we're about to now in terms of that 30 game mark to give us the idea that this consistently is who they are, especially on the defensive end, which cannot be said more and more enough. The defensive turnaround for this team and the effort and the ability that they've shown to execute on that side of the floor, because this team has wanted to play at a faster pace throughout the course of the season. They've remained a top 10 team in terms of pace this year, but also turning teams over to create fast break opportunities to be able to get some easy buckets to utilize that athleticism that they have with Derrick Jones Jr., with Derrick Live of the second. Now with the additions of P.J. Washington and Daniel Gaffer, it plays into the hands of the talent that they have, and they are playing a style of basketball that gives these players the ability to succeed in the skill sets that they have. And you give Jason Kidd, yes, you give Jason Kidd credit and this coaching staff for sticking with what they felt was the vision of this team. Nico Harrison, who I believe is an executive of the year candidate in the NBA for getting the types of players that fit the vision that this team and this coaching staff was looking for. And now they are executing that night in and night out. And I said it after the game and what happened with Dante Exum when he hit that shot against the Houston Rockets. Where would this team be without Dante Exum? Derrick Jones Jr. in a lot of ways the same way. Dante Exum had not hit such a field goal in terms of a game-winning or a game-tying three-pointer in his career, and he's done so now over the last week and a half with the Mavericks. Just another guy whose story has been incredible to see flourish with this team and the renaissance that he's had in the second act of his NBA career and the Mavericks having the confidence that he could be another guy that can add athleticism and defense, but more importantly, confidence in knocking down his three-point shot. And he has done so at the biggest moments of this season for this team. And for Luka and Kyrie, yet another guy that they can trust because that to me, if you're looking for something, a little nugget to continue to take with you throughout the course of the year, the trust that Luka Doncic has in his teammates. Obviously, you're going to have that with Kyrie Irving, who has hit some of the biggest shots in NBA history. Of course, the one to be able to sink the Golden State Warriors ultimately for the Cleveland Cavaliers to win a championship. But when other guys are being able to be counted upon in big moments and then prove themselves to be worthy of those moments, P.J. Washington with the game winner. He should have had the game winner in Cleveland before Max Struess be, you know, upset that and knocked down that 60-foot buzzer beater, but he was able to get the game winner against Golden State. Dante Exum now multiple times hitting game-tying and game-winning three-pointers 
in the assist that Luka Doncic had to exit to be able to knock down that shot to send the game into overtime against Houston. That is another huge indicator of the trust, the chemistry, and the communication that Jason Kidd is always talking about with this team that their biggest superstar and one of the best players in this league and in the world is trusting his teammates to be able to hit shots when they need his team to do so. And Luka Doncic is making the right play to be able to have his team in position to be able to win. That is yet another marker that you can utilize when you're looking at how this team is growing together, that their superstar trusts each and every one of them to be able to make those plays in those critical moments. And most importantly, his teammates are delivering. It's one thing to trust the guys to be able to make the right play and those guys continue to miss shots and not execute those plays down the stretch over and over again. But when they continue to actually make the right plays, make the shots, win games, and be able to do so over and over and over again, that confidence and trust only grows for their superstar who will always be in the MVP discussion. But the winning that this team has done has put them to the forefront of one of the most dangerous teams in the NBA. And dare I say yes, a legitimate championship contender because when you've got those two in Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, role players understanding their role night in and night out and fulfilling that to a T and then being able to execute their role in the biggest moments that matter, that is the formula for teams that you look at that have a potential championship like DNA to give yourself confidence that they may be a team that can make a postseason run, and if things break the right way for the Mavericks, they could be right back in the Western Conference Finals. You've seen guys like Tim Legger of ESPN and others have the ultimate confidence in the Mavericks' ability to be able to be a team that you could see in the Final Four, if you will, when it comes to the Eastern and Western Conference Finals with an opportunity to get to an NBA Finals appearance. That's where we are right now. And I've tried to hold myself back. I've tried to, you know, temper expectations. I've tried to put myself in a spot where, look, Kevin, you got to see it over and over and over again. Now, for sure, for some of you, you've thought the same thing. Let me see it a few more times. Let me see it another time. Let me see it another time. And guess what? The Mavericks have done it another time over and over and over again to the tune of 14 wins in their last 16 games. The only two losses being the one game that they lost on the road to the Oklahoma City Thunder without Luka Doncic in that game, and I do believe if Luka plays in that game, as competitive as the Mavericks were against OKC, I think they win that game. And then, of course, they lose the final game of their road trip in a close game on the road against the Golden State Warriors, where they still had a chance to win that game. What about 12 seconds left as they were down by two and they missed a traveling call on Klay Thompson? Like, that's the margin that we're talking about of the Mavericks being from 14 to 2 to possibly 16 to 0 in their last 16 games. But that's the way the ball bounces sometimes in the league. But nonetheless, they've been dominating teams. They've won close games. They've won when they've made threes. They won when they haven't made threes. They've won when they've dominated the glass. They've won with guys like PJ Washington scoring 32 points in a game to lead a win. All of these things. I think are culminating to something extremely special. And you saw how special it was on Sunday with Dante X and knocking down that three pointer and then sending the game into overtime. This team has something special going on and it will be fun to watch over the final four games of the regular season for them to lock up a top six spot in the West and then see what their playoff matchup is and then go forward from there and give us what could be a spectacular run in the playoffs far cry from what we were looking at. It felt like just a month ago when what this team was doing, but that's where we are for the Dallas Mavericks. And they are playing with the utmost confidence as they should, because they're winning in a variety of ways that allows them to feel good about their chances to win night in and night out, especially when you've got Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving on the floor together. And these guys playing their role the way that they need to to help this team win ball games. It's a recipe for success, and success is what the Mavericks are currently having right now as they are playing their best basketball of the season. Hopefully not peaking too early, but we'll see as the rest of the regular season rolls on. 
That'll do it for this episode of Inside the Mavs. Really appreciate you hanging out with me on this episode today. Make sure you like and comment on the video as well if you're watching this on my YouTube channel at Kevin Gray Sports. Also, if you're listening to the podcast, give it a five-star rating. Write a review for it. Download it on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Remember, Inside the Mavs is the official Mavericks podcast of 97.1 The Freak. My name is Kevin Gray, Mavericks Brand Post Game Host on the Dallas Mavericks Radio Network. Follow me on Twitter at Kevin Gray Sports for everything on Inside the Mavs. And tune in for a special episode coming up this week. Michael Scotto of Hoops Hype of USA Today is going to be joining me for a new episode of Inside the Mavs as we talk about the national perception of the Mavericks and how things have turned around from this team since the All-Star break. So make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Also, subscribe to Kevin Gray Sports on YouTube so you know when that episode drops with Michael Scotto of Hoops Hype of USA Today. Again, my name is Kevin Gray, Mavericks Pre- and Post Game host on 97.1 The Freak on the Dallas Mavericks Radio Network. I'll talk to you next time on Inside the Mavs.